Jersey's own Zach Gelb. Or maybe it's Pennsylvania. Anyhow, it's one of the two, I'm pretty sure. The Zach Gelb Show continues on Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. Are you annoyed? The answer is yes if you're an Eagles fan. Heck, I'm not even an Eagles fan and I'm annoyed. Because that was a lack of effort yesterday. You lose to a three-win team, a team that you were down 29 to nothing to, that's a disgrace. And you ended off losing 32 to 14. Defensive line did not show. Roddy McLeod and the rest of that secondary did not show. The offense did not show. Zach Ertz, zero effort. And he could have got the quarterback killed. That's the prize possession. You don't mess with the quarterback. You make that block. Sick of the antics of Dorio Green Beckham. Nelson Aguilar, good game, right? Four receptions, 23 yards. That's not a good game, folks. Really, the only person I'm not mad at yesterday is Paul Turner. Six receptions, 80 yards. However, who are we going to blame for this loss? The head coach, the players, the owner, the general manager? No. I blame one man, and he's related to me. That is my father, Bob Gelb. Father, how are you? Well, Zach, uh, always wanted to say this, but uh, long-time father, first-time guest. Oh, well, thank you very much. And sometimes I question why we're going to put you on the air, but we're going to do it right now because you are the reason for the Eagles' problems. Well, Tell the on. story. No, no, no. This is why you're the reason. Because if you would have never made the phone call to break the Leonard Toast story that the Eagles were moving, the Eagles would not have a football team here in Philadelphia, and fans would not be aggravated today. Uh, most likely, but uh, you know whether it was that the initial uh, phone call to Mr. Tosa's hotel suite um, in, in, outside of Phoenix, and I want to say November of 1984 sounds right. I believe they yes. sold to Bremen the next year. It was it was way before the Atlanta game um, when the Eagles traveled down to Atlanta for 15,000 people in the world. You know that was I think the last game in. Would have been the last Eagle game, so a bunch of Eagle fans went down to, uh, I guess it was what Fulton County is that where they played, and um, and there were fifteen thousand people there. But you know uh, uh, what had happened was yeah. Um, tell the story real quickly. Sure. I mean, I mean, um, I, we had a show. I worked at uh, at WC at what was then WCAU twelve ten radio. I uh, was producing a C. Frederick show, Bill Campbell's show, the Phillies, and we had a late night sports show. Uh, with Don Henderson called the Sports Final. And uh, I had heard from Will McDonough, um, for those of the, you who don't know who Will McDonough was, uh, he was a, a columnist for the, the Boston Globe, father of Sean McDonough. And probably at the time, he was, he was known as the 29th owner. Before social media, I think were there 28 teams then? I, I, I'm not positive. But he was, whatever their teams was, he was called the next team's owner. Because he knew everybody, and he was he was the voice of the NFL. Nobody knew anything. Uh, if, if you didn't know it, it wasn't Will McDonough. Will McDonough knew everything that happened. He talked to everybody, and he wrote a little blurb in his uh, a must read appointment uh, reading at the time was his Sunday football column in the Boston Globe, and he had written a, a little blurb about uh, rumor of of uh, Leonard Toast. Uh, headed to Arizona to possibly uh, move the team there. Um, and you know, I, back in the day, I was uh, hanging around CAU doing nothing, so I figured I'd, I'd call a few friends. Great um, employee you were. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and uh, I, I call a few friends. One of my good friends, Mark Bricklin, um, who's, uh, whose family had uh, lived in Arizona, I said, Mark, uh, do me a favor. Uh, if you had all the money in the world, or you didn't at least gamble it away, uh, if you had all the money in the world, where would you be staying if you were holed up somewhere around Phoenix um, uh, if you were Leonard Toast? And he told me, well, you, you, you have uh, two choices. Um, one, I don't recall. The other was the Phoenician Hotel, which is a glorious uh, resort uh, right outside of Phoenix. So um, back in the day, we had something called information or a phone book and you would dial 411 never heard and, of it uh, ask for the number of the phoenician and hence look at that i got the phone number and uh called the hotel um it was about around uh 10 45 coming up on 11 o'clock um and i asked for mr tosa's room 
And lo and behold, he is he is registered at the Phoenician. Uh, after about three or four rings, uh, he picks up. I go, uh, Mr. Toast. He goes, yes. I go, well, and it, it didn't sound like he was kind of all there, but it was him. Um, and uh, I said, Mr. Toast, this is Bob Gelb. Uh, I, I work at WCAU, and we're all on the sports final right now. I'm just like, could you tell me what you're doing in Arizona with that? I got and he says? A, an expletive. Uh, <laughs> told me to hang up the phone uh, in not so nice words. At which time uh, I reported what transpired to Mr. Henderson. I want to think it was a Friday night. Um, because there was not that much about it in the papers the next day. Uh, I'm not really positive that's the case. It's been over 30 years ago. But uh, the story did break, and uh, whoever says that they knew it first or they had it first or this, I, who cares? You know what? Uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure that that, that was the, the initial point that brought the media and, and the craziness down on the definitive move from – from Philadelphia to Arizona, um, and that's when, you know, everything went crazy. And Mr. Brayman, Norman Brayman, who owned a bunch of, or probably still does, uh, car dealerships in South Florida, and a Philadelphian came in and bought the team. Well, Pretty much it's my fault. So I Yeah, mean, and, and you know what the ironic is part is? People. The ironic part is a Giant fan helped save the Philadelphia Eagles. Well, you know, it's it, it's all in the flow of time. You know, you look at it this way. You know, it was you know Joe Pistarczyk, I think at that time was the Eagles quarterback, and you remember Joe Pistarczyk. He was the quarterback for the Giants, who uh, fumbled the handoff that was picked up by Herm Edwards and turned our 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 dismal Giants team into the championships that we uh, procured in the George Young era and Bill Parcells. For for that, um, you know. Uh, that that play with that game and the the hatred that the Giant fans had for for what was going on with the Mara family, uh, the Giants probably wouldn't have hired Bill Parcells. Well, there you go. Bob Gelb is to blame today yeah. for the Eagles' yeah, yeah, problems. You, you are to blame, and you should be embarrassed because your good reporting back then have screwed this team and have yeah. uh, screwed the Philadelphia Eagles for many years. Um, one last thing before you let me go, and you know there are a couple nurses down in Boca taking care of Purple, who's out of the hospital. <laughs> and this is a travesty. I mean, three weeks without makeup. See, what do you think about that? Uh, that's when we'll hang up with him. I always wanted to hang up my father. He's talking about my uh, grandmother, uh, who had a surgery today, and we do wish her the best. Yeah, because the the audience really uh, knows a lot about my grandmother. <laughs> uh, but we do wish grandma the best. Uh, she'll be all right. There you go. You want to ever call up and bash me? Call up and say, oh, well, you're not an Eagles fan. Just remember, my father, and you may not like him today for it, saved the Philadelphia Eagles for moving.